Grace Downs, 10 minutes or less. I'm Jonas. And I'm TNT Dynamite, the explosive one. And we have a very special guest. Jeremiah. Still here. Still, still here. Still here. Still shame shirt. I know. Yeah. We changed it up this week. Yeah, it's been a long week. It's I've been, been wearing week. the same shirt. I don't want TLC either. Call <laughs> me a scrub. <laughs> oh. So, all right. Last one. From Jeremiah Topic, what is the most overrated song artist in music that you've ever seen? The I, I would... Oh, wow. Ooh, going for the jugular. <laughs> All right, come on, come on. Elvis. 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 Go for it. All right, Elvis or the Beatles, why? Both. Why? <laughs> you can't say the one of the most people one of the most well known musicians ever is the I gotta the... have context behind my hate. I can't just hate the hate. Oh, here you go. Michael Jackson. No, you no, you can't put that down. Put you can't say that. No, I don't I don't know. I got I gotta have context. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do well, it. In that case, I'm gonna say Adele. Adele. What? No, Adele is a national treasure. No, no, no. I think uh, so. Are you is Adele honestly your answer? No. Uh no, but oh, okay. she's awfully um what? What's the word? Well, choose your words wisely. <laughs> yeah. I no, I don't the, Obnoxious, yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. Oh it's yeah, it's just too much. Like, why are you yelling at me? Like, <laughs> just, his heart is hurt. He's like, I liked you over the first four yeah. days today. No, I would say my most, the most uh, overrated musician, and, and you know, like, of course it's gonna be like some of those like one hit wonder, like Sigh or like something like that. But honestly, as far as like real talk, because of like the almost like i kind of want to almost say like drake a little bit because if you're not going to write your own music if you're not going to write your own lyrics and you're ghostwriting thing if you if you can sing it well and rap it well does that make you a good musician i mean depends on yeah the context i, I don't know yeah and i don't and i really ain't hating on drake i i, I do no, like some of drake no, stuff it's but like, say whatever you want but when i think about that i think about like okay when you think about somebody like michael jackson a lot of his songs were written. When you think about somebody like Elvis, Elvis didn't write shit. That's, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, that's like true, I guess. Like the Beatles, a lot of their stuff, well, they wrote a lot of their I stuff. I think they wrote most of their yeah, stuff. They, wrote, yeah. they, wrote, they did write most of their stuff. Um, but it was commonplace for people to have songs written, and then like a written song would come already made, and then you just sing the lyrics. They, I made the song for this person to sing. Um, it is, it is highly looked down in like a uh, modern day, uh, rap that you have to write your own lyrics, but trust me, these people are out here taking songs, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, rock so. is a very much, a, there's always like a ghostwriter and then they are like, here's a song or pop, yeah, I guess pop, pop yeah. is the biggest. Yeah. Doing yeah. a cover, doing a cover in rock music is a hundred percent acceptable. There's, there's bands that are strictly singing somebody else's yeah. stuff. So yeah, if you take. Britney Spears Toxic, that wasn't written by her, of course. You but know. there's a version out there with the original woman that sang it. Yep. And they didn't even take her vocals off. Britney Spears just put like this nasally thing on top of it. So if you go and listen to both of those, it, it's remarkable how much different they sound the same. Like she doesn't mm -hmm. add too much to it other than it's she can be put on the music video just like a flight attendant. I mean, uh, song record. she added her finder's fee. She bought the song. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she bought it. Yeah, it's yeah. not like she ripped it off. Mm -hmm. But right. to me, Drake, I, I could see that because, like, if you're rapping about your life, and it, that's, like, my understanding about it, and someone else wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, so, so why is rap held to a different standard? Because it's two the Caucasian friends. But I think it's the – but I think it's <laughs> – but I, I honestly don't. think it's the rappers that hold each other to a different standard than the – because okay. rock musicians don't, yeah. don't give a shit. But, like, if you're coming from the heart talking about your life and whatever, and somebody else is writing your stuff, then it's inauthentic. Where I feel a lot of rappers hold pride in, like, this is about yeah. my life. I have nothing against it personally, but that's yeah, my I've... understanding of it too is that yeah. it's – like, Tupac was singing about shit that got him killed. Like, it was – he was legit. Um yeah. That's just like kind of my outsiders. Well, and, and that actually makes sense because back in the day, like the original rappers, gangster rappers, they were rapping about shit that was going on in their life. Like, oh, yeah. You, you know, like stuff like that. And that, you know, so if you, so that's where I guess it was, a lot of it was found. Is that, is that true, TNT? Is that kind of why it's looked down upon in rap? I mean, I would assume so, but I would, I would challenge a person to even say, do you remember when we used to have CDs 
when you used to get like a physical CD. I don't have one on me, mm-hmm. but like, and they would come with those booklets. Yeah, the lyric book looked, yeah. And you would look through there, and then it would have a bunch of people's names at the end of that book. Yeah. Yeah. Some of those people were helping. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're never going to really get away from it. If me and Jonas are sitting there in the living room, and we will be soon because we now have somebody who's going to assist us in uh, making our our rap album. Mm -hmm. Um, If we're sitting there in the room and we're – bouncing lines off each other or we speak to another friend and we're like yeah i'm really thinking about this line and we decide to give them a credit it's like the difference of did they help write it did they write that line for me or did they just help in the process so yeah so how far you want to reduce it right um, yeah, yeah 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 i don't i, I write everything i do but there's okay. a song i wanted to use the a piece of a thong song as part lyrics and I'm like, fuck it, like, that dude said it best. I'm going to do that. Yeah. I just wrote his name, hey, that. thanks to Cisco for inspiring yeah. this in the song. So mm-hmm. that, to me, it's – anyone can hear it. Anyone knows that that's not mine. I'm not going to try to make that mine. But, like, at the same time, do I credit everybody in blues for any time I write a blues progression, right? So it's no. at what point do you want to give them the credit? Mm-hmm. So I what? think if Drake is – singing someone else's songs then as long as he's given credit that's fine but if he's trying to pass it off like yeah i wrote that so i don't but know enough about what, that but that would be the determining factor for but me. is that what rappers do like drake if he does have a ghostwriter does drake buy the rights to the song and pretends it's his and that's what people frown on or does no. he admit hey this guy wrote this song for me yeah see and and, and the thing is is that they want for the brunt of the work to be done by the artist, I, I think, at least uh, the, the consumer of, of this genre of music. I think they want the brunt of the work to be done by, by the artist, but there are people who, it's like those who can't teach, uh, those who can't do teach. So there's a lot of people out there that can't get their own careers off the ground. So they'll sell a song. They'll write a song, which, which is amazing, and then they'll sell mm-hmm. it. Like, even, like, uh, even people like Prince had songs written for him. Um, right, right. And right. it's just about like it's still like the the artist has to perform it. They have to deliver it. They have to finalize the product, obviously. But mm-hmm. but you know, actually, you fly. make a really good point because a lot of the pe- this isn't even in music, but a lot of even like boxers, professional wrestlers, like all the people that have boxing schools, wrestling schools. Yeah, the Rock ain't having a motherfucking wrestling school because he made it. He's famous, but but some wrestler dude who didn't make it knows how to wrestle he knows the meta he just didn't do, so then he can then teach wrestling or a yeah, boxer so, so who i could i suck at boxing i lost but i know how to box i can teach you how yeah. to box he'll be like so i guess Coast steve austin have you ever thought about dropping to your ass with somebody's chin on your shoulder i think that should be your new move <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Was like really i should put yeah. like an attitude coach or something develop yeah. your character <laughs> Right, right. So it's yeah. it's in, and I guess that so that goes across all because well, you're right. Like there are people that are great lyricists, but if they try to sing it, it sounds like shit. So they're like, I'm never I gonna sound make like it. shit when I sing. <laughs> like, so, but so did Bob Dylan. So you know, so did Mick Jagger. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah fuck it. So so follow me. Maybe it's maybe it's kind of like this. Um, okay. Like how how rap started out was just like a bunch of people at a lunch at the lunch table, just like trying to say something that was funny or like a uh, quick witted. Mm-hmm. It's, so it's it's almost on the same aisle of like comedy so mm-hmm. in comedy if you get caught stealing somebody else's joke mm-hmm. that's lights out so right, similar right. to in like rap where if you're caught stealing somebody else's quick witty one liners or you're taking one liners from somebody else and trying to pass them off as your own mm-hmm. it's just mm-hmm. not it's not it's looked on badly and I feel like rap and comedy are are two places where like that integrity is is held holier than than any other. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because yeah, it's it's about the creativity of it. Like, cause rock, like rock has there's a lot of creativity in rock and lyrics and all that stuff, but there is a lot of like there's many people contributing together in a rock right. band. And, yeah. You know, so even even the singer sings the song, but I'm sure even like in bands you've had, Jeremiah, like some of the band member might go, "Hey, usually you say this. What if you changed it to this?" And they're yeah. like, "Oh." Okay, yeah, that actually sounds a hell of a lot. You know, so it's like a collaboration where comedy, rap, it's very solo. It's very mm-hmm. like one person centric. So if you're taking other input into your stuff, it's almost not as authentic as. Right, so. and there's more to it too, right? Like with um, with music, um, you could 
when you listen to a band, you can tell like the 10 different artists that the members of that band liked. Like I, mm. I can listen to a band and be like, oh, you know, they, they, I hear Beastie Boys in there. I'm, I'm hearing Pantera in there. I'm hearing some Metallica in there. Um, that's, uh, it, that's how it becomes its own thing. But it, mm -hmm. all of it, if you really listen closely, anything you hear isn't new. It's this person's interpretation on it with the input of these other people. You know, like mm -hmm. you can't just rip that off, Jeremiah. Change these couple phrasings here. Oh, okay. And then now it's now it's your own thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But you know what? On that same note, what was the biggest indictment against like Backstreet Boys, NSYNC, New Kids on the Block, the boy bands? He used to be like, somebody else is writing that. Rick Rubin is writing all of these songs for them, man. <laughs> They're not writing any of these. Yeah. And we used to not Showing look them. on them the same way we would look on like a Nirvana or like any of yeah. the other bands of that era that were doing it big because they were actually writing their stuff. Yeah, and I think it's a different situation because though pop is all about show. Yeah. Like pop isn't about the music. It's about getting someone pretty or good looking or handsome up there. Oh, the selling song records. Is, the song is Cause there's metal about shows or, you know, too, like if you've ever been to a Rammstein, a Guar show, yeah. like it's Guar's music. Isn't particularly good to me. No, no, that it's is not. an incredible show. That's not yeah, yeah. anything you'll forget. Uh, I to see me, people. pop seems to sell. ICP. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're they're, crazy. They're, dude, their shows were awesome. Like their music is, well, they it, really give it, you free Fago. They would throw a... they, they they would take it and open it up and throw it on the crowd and then throw the bottle. Like they would go through how hundred two liters if not more. Like they would uh, constantly be cracking two liters and just spraying them all over the crowd. And they would have little intermissions between songs where like it would there there was a lot there was it was a show. It's like a circus. Kind of, yeah. They're, the, what they call it, like the Dark Bring Circus or whatever, and that literally was that's how they kind of presented their show. And like you said, Guar, it's all about the show, right? You know, it's it's not about what we're singing. The music is just secondary to the performance, right? And maybe that's what it's like with the Backstreet Boy. You know, you get these get these pretty boys up there dancing Dance. around, and yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, you know, what I mean, but but that's true because if you're if you're putting on a show, what you're doing isn't necessarily is is important. If you're just Look sitting at the there with a car, your, you're right? They oh, they sell like they're one of the biggest touring acts of the year, and they tour for like what two weeks? Like who cares about <laughs> Christmas songs? February third, right? Yeah, you didn't exactly. write Jingle Bells. <laughs> yeah, what the hell? <laughs> Bunch of posers. <laughs> yeah, right. exactly. So yeah, it's 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 interesting, and and but that's also I think people get lost in that because everyone wants to have the perfect song, the perfect music, the perfect stand up routine. But like you said, even people like Wesley Willis, like, you know, or people like, um, you know, like Gallagher. Gallagher didn't say funny shit. Gallagher was not a funny person. But Gallagher got up there and <laughs> smashed watermelons and threw around chickens. And, like, people yeah. went to go see the show. It didn't matter what the hell that man's – Carrot Top. Carrot Top's it's trash, but he Gallagher. has all those – he has all yeah. those damn props and, like, throwing shit around. People, are, people go to see the niche. show. Yeah, yeah. this is coming for your head, Gallagher. Yeah. <laughs> Straight. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to come out there with a chainsaw and just chainsaw things on stage and talk about weird shit in between. Winner. Go up Sounds and dangerous. chop a log, man. <laughs> just, just go up and cut logs for two yeah. hours and be like, get this yeah. raw. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'll do. Just That's get me. Sawdust all over everybody. <laughs> <laughs> that's the splash zone you know they give give them n95 yeah. masks and just be like <laughs> do not come to the show if you have wood allergies yeah. you can't it's just you with a wood chipper pointed at the audience <laughs> <laughs> this is a great show oh my god I dude everyone's like everyone's leaving yeah. with splinters and yeah. shit like free mulch oh. yeah yeah and if you come if you have a farm you can take home a bag of mulch yeah. for free yeah, it's it's a it's free a mulch. whole free mulch, dude. Get a wood chipper and just put like logs of baloney through it. And shit, just oh like, yeah, shit. you can call your damn baloney pony. <laughs> yeah, right. Do you still have that shirt? No, I've wore a hole in that shirt, man. I, As you I, notice, I wear shirts days in a row. Yeah, uh, <laughs> back in the day, did because I only gave one to you and our buddy Todd that passed away. I had a, it was a, it was an, I don't know if you ever saw that, or you probably saw Todd wear the shirt, uh, TNT, but it was it. An, the image graphic, like riding the baloney pony to heaven. And yeah, saddle up on a baloney pony to heaven. And no one, one. Yeah, sa yep, yeah. I had a like, dog shirt too, it was yeah. really nice. He yeah. made me, had a rhinosaurus on it. 
and it just said dog. <laughs> <laughs> that was an awesome shirt. You came over and made that one with me. But yeah. I did. When you ever wore that baloney pony shirt, did anyone ever get it? No. Did anyone like go? <laughs> like <laughs> no. Which is made it beautiful. I, I've worn it to church and funerals. <laughs> it's 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 a sex thing, isn't it? The yeah. Baloney yeah. pony. Yeah. Oh, it I, is. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, I thought it was. I thought it was a. I thought it was a horse made of animal parts. No. <laughs> but yeah, it was like yeah, it was like a saddle light switch on an arrow pointing up, the number two, and then it was like pieces of baloney and like a pony, and then like the heavenly gates or whatever. And it was just like this image graphic. <laughs> I still have that on my computer somewhere on a hard drive. I should I should remake those. You should make big prints. Hang them up in your house. <laughs> like seven of them, just the yeah, whole wall yeah. full of them, different just sizes. Make your own wallpaper, and we could just wallpaper. Everyone's like, oh, that's everything nice. Everything in so a baloney sweet. pony. <laughs> ew, ew. Just, in fact, just take pictures of real dicks, and we could just wallpaper. <laughs> why Why are we beating around the bush at this point? Speaking, okay, know. speaking of which, and we have to go. This episode's going on. <laughs> <laughs> There is the there is the subreddit. It's called I don't remember what it's called, but they take pictures of like a girl giving a blowjob and then edit out the penis and leave the tip of the penis as her bottom lip, so she has this like really sad frown face on. Oh. <laughs> Everyone's like, anyways, that's enough. Got to go. Why would you admit to that? <laughs> what I mean, dude, how did you part... stumble across that, dude? Every what time you're you on searching? Reddit, every time you're on Reddit people will put subreddits in the comments and then you click on them and you're like, what did I just find? Anyways, that was a good way to end the week. Guys, I told you we were coming on strong with, with, the, with the Photoshop penis lip. That's all the time we have for today's episode. Jeremiah, thank you for joining us. It was, it yeah, was a thanks, pleasure. Thanks I'm sorry me. we made you wear the same shirt all week, but you know, it happens. You know, it was a long, hard struggle to get these shows done. It was work of progress. We did it. We did it. So. A sense of accomplishment. Exactly. So go to thecrazytown.com for Jonas. TNT. Uh, Jeremiah. Uh, all right. We're out.